You know, I had always hoped that right before I died, my life would flash before my eyes and I would see wonderful things. But as I was hanging up there, I didn't really see much of anything. But I did see you. Hi, this is Matt McDonald with Cal TV Entertainment News. I'm here with the directors of the upcoming film, Swiss Army Man. Uh, Hi, guys. The Daniels, Daniel Shiner and Daniel Kwan. Um, so I want to start off talking about the fact that you guys are a directing duo. Yeah. Um, so I know in my family they might think that I'm probably not super good at compromising. So how does the dynamic between you two work on create, making decisions and how do you formulate the film together? Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I hated like class projects because I had to like collaborate and I would be like, oh, these kids, like they're gonna bring my grade down. Uh, <laughs> but in retrospect, it's like so valuable to learn how to compromise, you know, like very few things in life uh, allow you to do things by yourself. Um, yeah, except for um, when I was in film school, I, I had the same feeling like collaborating with a bunch of kids who had very different tastes was just a pain in the butt. So I just went into animation, which allowed me to just be by myself, um, which is pretty, just pretty funny because uh, the problem with animation was he would never finish things. So like <laughs> I would see his animations and I'd be like, these are great, except you're halfway done and you gave up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to convince you to finish things. Um, and that's why we became a directing duo, was so I could convince Dan Kwan to finish things. <laughs> that's not, not, not entirely true, but we, uh, we definitely balance each other in a strange way. He, he, went, he, he did a lot of like, improv when he was in college, and that was kind of his main uh, focus there. And so like, he was kind of the opposite. He was uh, like a pro-collaborator, and I was a pro-isolation creator, whatever. Um, in some ways, it actually is similar to how, what, what the characters in our movie go through. It's really odd. Um, but our our relationship definitely bleeds into the Hank and Manny relationship. So it's pretty. So if you watch the movie, you'll, you'll understand how our working dynamic is. Yeah, it's basically an uh, autobiographical documentary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've also said that working on music videos also f functioned as a type of film school for you. So what did working on music videos provide for you yeah. that film school didn't? Okay. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna love this. <laughs> well, I uh, we we kind of always say we didn't learn much in film school. Like the uh, the biggest thing that happened for me in film school was like a bunch of kids who I really respected also got tricked into going, um, and then we all met each other and made stuff outside of class. Um, and then at music videos, what we kind of did was we we pitched ideas based on what we wanted to learn, and so we would kind of like convince a band like, hey, let's uh, we want to do a car chase music video and then we'd learn about stunts and car chases and how to photograph that and orchestrate that um so like for six years we've just been kind of um experimenting you know and just making stuff which is kind of like the only film school you need is to just make yeah. things the best they can you can d d d d d sentences yeah. your turn we don't know how to talk anymore um <laughs> we know how to make movies but we don't have <laughs> no right dang it <laughs> um we uh we also like realized that uh Music videos is probably one of the only uh, form of video that's experimental but still has money. It's a, it's a really weird thing that we accidentally um, landed in that world because it, it ended up being a really good outlet for us because we could still have our voice and still maintain something um, individual. Um, and take risks. And that take like, risks, yeah. you know, when you make a Fritos commercial, you yeah. can't take many risks. But when you're making a music video for battles, like kind of anything goes. Um, and on top of the, the last thing I'll say that like is crucial that you'll never learn in, in a film school is like uh, the politics of, of making anything for money. Like uh, like we, we got to we got to learn on a very small scale, you know, starting with really small budgets. It's like who gives you the money and how do you treat them and how do you make sure everyone is happy while you're still making something unique and interesting. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work out, but uh, we got we got really lucky. Um, we found a lot of good relationships, um, and that kind of stuff really helped once we got to the bigger stuff. Once we got to this movie, you know, when there's much more money on the line and, and huge actors who have big teams and big agents and big managers who are ready to, you know, smack you down if you do something wrong. So that was a big thing that I don't think you could ever really learn um, at a film school. Something that I love about the films that I watched growing up 
like the Goonies or Hook or these like big sets and yeah. things like that we don't really get anymore. But mm -hmm. in this film, there's a lot of like puppetry and set making. So what was the process behind making those and where did those ideas come from? Yeah, I think uh, we, we similarly loved those kinds of movies. Um, and and uh, it's, it's sort of selfish, like we just, it's more fun to build things with your friends than it is um, to, to like yeah. have someone make it in a computer later. Um, but also I, I think, you know, 99% of human beings have like been watching movies since they were kids and, and there's something about like um, making stuff that is kind of transfers uh, like through the lens and you can kind of tell that like a bunch of friends made this and that like they actually went out there and, and built these things and we, we felt like it grounded the story um, in a really fun way if you could kind of see, uh, what, for those who haven't seen the movie or the trailer, like you get to watch these characters um, uh, build things in the woods out of garbage and sticks and, and we literally did that. We built things in the woods out of garbage and sticks um, and it was kind of a, really janky but fun celebration of movies like uh, E.T. or like Michel Gondry music videos or, or things where you can kind of see like, oh, they built that, look at that little puppet, and I can tell like that that's fake, but it makes it more fun. Yeah, we got to, we got to take a tour of ILM yesterday, which was uh, insane, but like they took us down the hallways and just pointed at like a prop from almost every movie that ever needed visual effects, and it's kind of, it's kind of fun to, to be reminded that like that's why we make movies um, is because of those films and those films had a uh, texture to it that um, I think a lot of movies lack today and um, we wanted to do that but on a smaller scale and on a more intimate scale and just create something that kind of exudes um, creativity and uh, yeah that's why that's why we made all that stuff. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, Swiss Army Man comes out in theaters on July 1st. <laughs> yeah, see in theaters. It's kind of a musical and there's action scenes. Go, Go Bears! Bears! On three. <laughs> Thanks, guys.